for, for those of you joining for the first time, uh, Percussion Software had a, held a, a search engine optimization webinar um, focused about three weeks ago, and we had great response. Uh, and lots of people asked questions on that. So what I thought we would do is uh, bring together some folks from the SEO world, have them join us to, uh, to answer your questions that came up during that, uh, during that session. There was about 43 of them. And before we dive right into those questions, I thought everybody could just go around the, the hang and introduce themselves, and then, um, then we'll fire away. Why don't we start with you, Michael? Great. So I'm Michael Rumsky, Director of Search at Overdrive Interactive. Um, look forward to, to seeing what kind of questions we have and uh, go from there. Great. And what's on the whiteboard behind you, Michael? Uh, I'm actually at client's uh, client offsite right now, so right behind me is uh, just some code that we were, we were talking about earlier today. Fantastic. Well, we can't read it, so that's good. Well, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Okay. So I'm uh, Russ Ain. I'm the uh, SEO super supervisor for Overdrive. Uh, I've been with Overdrive for about three years, and I'm um, also looking forward to uh, hanging out uh, with Google Plus and percussion. Great. Steven? I'm Stephen Connor. I'm a senior SEO analyst at Overdrive, and this seems like it's going to be a ton of fun. All right. Good stuff. So what I did um, is, thanks for that. So what I did is I went through and I looked at the, uh, the various uh, questions that were asked, and there were 43 of them. Uh, well, 43 people asked questions. Um, and I tried to group them into four categories uh, so that rather than trying to answer each one individually, that would get a little tedious because a lot of them cover the same ground. Um, I thought that we would just go ahead and, um, and talk to some of the categories. And there were a few questions that I thought were pretty interesting that we could get into specifically. So um, you, the first one, we, had, we talked a lot about in our webinar about, uh, about the freshness update, the caffeine update, and, uh, and the impact on uh, what you guys are thinking there. Yeah, I'll, I'll start off and then uh, certainly Russ and Steven, if you want to chime in, feel free. So really it's, um, you know, it's, it's the volume of content. So, you know, if it's a, a small amount, it, it always seems like a daunting task to go back to your site and update things uh, and make them more SEO compliant. And it's really looking at, um, when we work with a client, it's looking at the overall value uh, to the site, but also to the business as a whole. And you kind of have to determine and, and sort of weigh those, those pros and cons uh, to make sure that you're, you're meeting the business value. Uh, most of all, it's you know, looking throughout the site to say, hey, here's a, a body of content, uh, maybe 1,000 pages, it could be 10,000 pages, and then start prioritizing those to start really updating uh, those pieces of content uh, with good SEO basic practices. Um, you know, in terms of the repetition and, and always having new good content, I would much rather see, you know, a blog or something like that that uh, really promotes that sort of new content than uh, making small adjustments uh, to a page. Ross, Stephen? Uh, something additional with just with that is uh, certainly you want to take a look at your uh, analytics and take a look and see which pages are actually drawing a lot of, a lot of traffic. So if you had a, a blog post, for example, that was three years old or whatnot, that was still receiving a large chunk of traffic, then that, that would be something you'd want to keep and may not uh, wish to update. And the same goes for something like a white paper or uh, additional content that, you're, uh, that you have on your site. And one other point is that it's important to remember that Google takes a specific priority to content on your site. So if you have something that's lower, it's a, hot, it's a main navigation page, it's not two, three, four, five, six folders down, you want to pay more attention to that. So something that's in a forum layered with some sort of search value in the URL and it's 18 levels, it's not as important to update. Okay. Um, and it looks like I was actually sending you guys a message. Are you guys in the same room? Because we're getting a little bit of an echo um, from you. So when one's first speaking, the other person should be on mute. That probably help. Um, question on that echo um, from you. So when one's first speaking, the other person should be on mute. That probably help. Um, question on that though is uh, when um, 
if you have a lot of old content and then you decide to delete that content or to take that content offline to um, uh, because it's just old and it's stale. Uh, people ask, you know, what happens? You know, is 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 there greater value in the backlinks that may be you know going to that content, or is now uh, is that value of the backlink being uh, overweighed uh, by you know the fact that it's stale? I mean, I would look at in terms of um, to, to what Russ was alluding to, which is really saying, look at look at your analytics. If you're just going to to clean house based on old content, you may want to see if it's actually driving you traffic and making sure that you're thinking about uh, sort of this preservation strategy of your content that is doing well for you. If it's not doing anything for you um, and there's, there isn't a lot of backlinks to it, then no harm, no foul. But it's, it comes down to creating a prioritization and sort of preservation strategy to make sure that you're, you're not killing uh, your traffic of your site. Throwing the baby out with the bathwater, as it were. Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. The um, um, you know we've certainly heard some stories where um, you know people like I think you know, the story was around like like the state of New York or New Jersey or you know, somebody like that had a lot of like thousands of pages and they just got wound up getting crushed. And actually, one of our uh, attendees uh, the other week was from a, a government agency in um, in Canada, and they had a similar problem in the sense that. They have a lot of old static content that's important from a government perspective. Um, they really can't take it down, but um, you know they're worried. You know that Google's going to start penalizing them for that. Yeah, I mean it's, it it comes down to the business value will always trump uh, trump whatever Google's role is, and, and you just need to make sure that that um, that's. Is still something that uh, people are trying to get their hands around. So, um, I would say a good three weeks ago, it was it was a hot topic conversation for us and our clients, um, and it's still, you know, uh, still working through. Um, what's going on there. And, and really for us, you know, as Overdrive, we're a content-centric organization, so it's really about creating good content uh, and making sure that we're, we're following sort of best practices. Um, mm -hmm. So we really haven't seen any adverse effects uh, just because we've, we've sort of always gone with this content-centric approach. But we've certainly heard of a, a few yeah. nasty little little things such as uh, the state of, uh, state of New Jersey, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody mentioned that they were, um, uh, well, I guess it relates to the keyword that they lost about 20% of their traffic. So, um, all right. So one of the other um, uh, one of the other areas that came up quite a bit was around, you know, around tagging, and this is specifically, um, you know, around both freshness but also around keyword structures. And you know, you know, early days of SEO was all about, you know, the meta tags around keyword and title and description. I mean, you know, what's your take? Do they matter anymore or are they more just for, you know, the, the clarity of the user experience? What do you guys think? Uh, in terms of the meta tags, uh, certainly title tags are, are still a big factor. Uh, I mean, you only have about 65 characters in there, so certainly there's still uh, a lot of value in incorporating keywords as well as incorporating your brand uh, within the, the title tag. Um, and then the description tag uh, certainly does play a factor with regards to keyword usage, but it's also, uh, more importantly, uh, the engines generally pull that in, into the search results. So you want to have kind of a strong marketing message, similar to a PPC ad, so that people are more, more apt to click on your, uh, click on your search result. Um, if you don't have a meta description or you have a meta description that isn't very relevant, the engines are going to pull just random text, some Description tag really does and you can you can really embed into that relevant to the page. Um, so you know keyword tags uh, we could debate till you know we're, we're blue in the face. Um, I'm 
of the camp of saying if it's a, a signal that we can put out there that's it's real, not trying to, to spam or to sort of uh, falsify. If it's a real signal that we can create um, some relevant descriptions around it, whether that's a keyword tag description or title, we want to send that out there. So it's it's really um, you know, 10 more minutes of your time to create these signals that who knows uh, what, a, what an engineer at Google being Yahoo may do with. Uh, so it's, it's just sort of best practice for us. If there's a ability to put it out there into the ether, let's do it. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, the value changes all the time. So it's just a matter of uh, keeping, let's not algo chase. Let's just put the signals out there and make sure we're, uh, we're meeting the best practice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think you addressed this earlier, but it's worth coming back to it. Um, you know, would a would a meta tag change be enough to signal to Google that the page has been updated, or uh, just to reiterate, or is that going to we uh, need to do more than that? Yeah, I mean, m more than that. Um, from from my experience and what we've seen, Stephen, you know, and Russ, have you? S I mean, a title tag can push you up a little bit. So if you're already starting a ranking page, something in the top 30, and you tweak a title tag, that can get you a few more positions, but it's not going to cause your page to be like, wow, it's brand new. Yeah, usually, usually the actual body copy itself is, is really, um, you know, where you really want to make those changes. The, the metadata, you know, that's, that's icing on the cake. It's really about creating good, relevant copy on the site. Um, and then the metadata is sort of, it is supporting that good content. So that's, you know. What are the, what are the key And then on the marketing end, what's the call to action of this page? So, you know, often you'll see sites that it's, it's a clear listing, um, you know, it's, it's 500 characters, but there's no clear, what do I do next to the user? And I guess that's sort of outside of Google uh, and creating good content. You always want to make sure you have that call to action clearly somewhere on the real estate that you can sort of swap out. Yeah, great. Um, thanks. So, you know, this one, Penguin, is, is a little newer. Um, you know, a lot of people, uh, of course, are worried about their, you know, the keyword strategies. Um, you know, certainly the examples that Google uh, put together in their, when they rolled out Penguin were pretty egregious. I think we would all look at their examples and say, yeah, that's an obvious case of keyword stuffing. Um, but, you know, as with previous, uh, as with previous uh, algorithm updates, usually, you know, some poor unsuspecting marketer got squeezed. Uh, you know, what, how have you changed your, you know, your text, uh, keyword strategy recommendations in light of Penguin. Um, do you have a sense for a threshold about what good keyword density is versus you know where you're going to start to get penalized for it? Uh, really, what we focus on at, at Overdrive is kind of as, my, as Michael said is um, the key the content centric focus. And really, in terms of keyword usage, uh, we try and and even post Penguin, we still recommend at, uh, creating content as naturally as possible. Uh, certainly, we want to in include keywords so that the engines get a sense of uh, of what we're talking about. But uh, in terms of the density, we've kind of remained in a similar fashion, so that you're not doing keyword comma keyword comma keyword. It's really remaining uh, trying to discuss a keyword and then ideally relevant keywords in the same in the same paragraph, and then kind of throughout the throughout the page content in in a uh, in a similar fashion. Okay. Michael, Stephen, anything you want to add? Which is, you do a 400 keyword estimate. What you want to avoid is exactly what Russ said, where you're reading it and the keyword comes up and the keyword comes up and the keyword comes up. So it's, if you're having a specific 
paragraph that you're saying, Aaron Dunn offers, Aaron Dunn is, Aaron Dunn works for, and it's every single sentence, that's going to annoy the user. And so even though you may rank for, it's still not going to help you with anything. So we try to maintain that natural balance. Yeah, that would be pretty boring. <laughs> um, you know, one of our, uh, you know, one of our, uh, our attendees um, on the webinar from a, apparently a, a fairly reputable company said they lost 21% of their traffic as a, re as a result of Penguin. Um, you know, maybe a small question about how they were, how they had structured those pages, but um, you know, any recommendations for someone who's, who's who got stuck and, and is trying to, you know, trying to rebuild? And is it as simple as just breaking down your pages and trying to restructure them, or um, is there something else they can do? Uh, it's kind of two different areas. Uh, you want to take a look at your um, your backlinks. That's a big factor with regards to Penguin. Um, so using uh, SEO Moz's tool. Uh, is, a, is a good one that, that we use at Overdrive. Um, in terms of taking, t taking an inventory of what, of what type of links you have to your site, um, also looking at analytics, looking at referrals to see what type of traffic, any, any specific sites you're getting a lot of traffic from. Um, but doing, doing an audit of, of your external links and trying to get a sense of if there are any sites that are, are using some type of nefarious linking practices that you want to uh, you, you want to try and avoid and, and see if they'll if they'll ideally remove them, um, and then certainly from a, a content perspective, you want to make sure that you're not using, you, you're not incorporating keywords too frequently, like like as Steve was talking about in terms of, um, uh, in terms of the description and and, and uh, rather um, page content and talking about keywords um, over and over and over again. You want page, middle 50, bottom 25, and you alluded to it, but you know, is it more just, again, write good content that's, that's natural, or is, it, um, is there still uh, you know, a, a strategy around where, that, you know, where those keywords appear on the page? Well, you still want to use them throughout the page. If you only, if you have five, there's still uh, you know, a, a strategy around where, that, you know, where those keywords appear on the page. Well, you still want to use them throughout the page. If you only, if you have five paragraphs and use it at the top and use it at the end, then the entire media of your page it has no reference to the keyword. So, you know, and if that's the subject of your page and what you want to rank for, or only having it in, let's say, 20% of your page, even though you might have it at a, you know, a density of 20%, still isn't going to help much. Okay. As always, write good content. <laughs> Everything falls mm -hmm. from there. Um, so uh, then there was a number of questions um, about Google+. Plus. I mean, this is something that we've seen, you know, personally, and, and one of the reasons we talked about it in the webinar is, you know, the ability to use Google+, Plus as a strategy for, um, you know, helping to boost uh, search rankings. I've heard a different, you know, sets of numbers um, about, you know, people who are logged into Google, you know, a Google account while they're surfing. Um, you know, we think it's, for us, it's right around 30% of our traffic. Um, you know, that has, you know, could potentially have a dramatic impact on, um, you know, what that page ranking looks like and what people are, are searching on, um, or the results of when they search. Um, any recommendations for people about getting started? Have you, have you been including Google Plus as part of your SEO toolkit for folks, or, you know, is this uh, still on the cutting edge? Yeah, so I, I would say this is, yet again, in the camp of making sure that you put every signal out there possible, and really... For us, we say, you know, Google, Google Plus is sort of the uh, identity platform, if you will, of, of Google, right? So within Google Plus, there's plenty of opportunity, it, you know, within the actual um, anatomy of a Google Plus page for the display name and page descriptions, photos and posts. There's SEO value there, just as if there were on your actual site. Um, same goes for Facebook and things like that. There's, there is SEO within these social-enabled sites, but we've seen... Google Plus on your site, uh, it plays into mobile, it plays into video, it plays into dis display. If you're doing a display campaign on AdWords, you can enable Google Plus. So it's, it's really sort of this way of identifying uh, your company w within Google, and you can verify your page, and it really, it really does help. Um, I can't say that 
it isn't still cutting edge. I think uh, July will be the official one year anniversary. Maybe. Um, and we, uh, I mean, as marketers, we always have this debate of, well, why should it be on Google Plus? Why not, right? I mean, it's Google's the, the number one search engine around the world. Uh, why wouldn't you want to put those signals out there? So it's definitely virgin territory because people have this really negative stigma. Uh, but you need you need to start thinking about how do you create this this identity platform throughout Google Plus and throughout Google. Yeah. Do you have any examples of people who've done? Uh, I mean, certainly there's there's uh, our own clients. Um, I won't name them on this webinar because I haven't asked for permission. But um, we we have done a uh, a few webinars about the the social impact of Google, and uh, certainly if you go to our webinar page. You can see some of some of the case studies of that, and that would be plug the URL. You can do it, Michael. <laughs> OVRDRV.com/backslash/webinar. There you go. Good stuff. Um, you know what? Uh, in terms of um, you know the, the this this era of uh, of personalized search, though, um, you know what? You, we're looking out a little bit, but it's probably not that far away. Um, you know what? What do you think about? The nature of you know my search results are going to be different than your search results. Um, how is that going to change for you? How is that going to change your recommendations for people? Yeah, I mean that's it's uh, that is a, a uh, right on the cusp of the new world. Um, you know the world of, of positioning. Uh, you know within SEO is is dying if not dead. It's about what gives us traffic. Uh, so it's it's still what gives us traffic and. You know, if you really think of Google Plus as that identi identity platform, well, you have these advocates who can build circles. How do you engage with those people in the circles? So then you do get a higher, uh, higher listings throughout that circle. So it's, um, you know, there's new and different strategies out there that are with those users. So it does have that secondary effect, um, but it's it is. There's no one great tactic I can I can speak to today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll all figure it out as we go, I guess, right? Uh, but you did say something interesting. I like that phrase. It's about traffic, not position. Are you uh, you want to make that a, a, a key takeaway, or was that? Uh, uh, that I mean, I think that has been you know the last two years, uh, maybe three years, a, a big push. We've talked about the semantic web for I don't know five, seven, five to seven years, right? For a very long time. Um, there's a great TED talk of the, the filter bubbles, and um, there's been a lot of research and talk about this idea of, of customized search, and it, you you can experience it yourself if you're you know at the per, uh, precision software offices, what you search there, and that IP starts to get a different result. It's very minimal. In all reality, it's, it is very, very small. Um, but it, we can imagine that this could grow. Um, and really, traffic, at the end of the day, that's, that's what pays the bills, right, and keeps these nice fluorescent lights on. So that's what we have to focus in on. It looks great. <laughs> so um, yeah, what about the impact of secure search and, and in, not, in not having you know, full data on, uh, on, on traffic? Like I said, for us, it's about 30% of our organic traffic is hidden. Um, you know, I don't know if that, what numbers you guys have seen in your clients. I'm, I'm interested to know kind of how the ratios have broken out and, and how does that impact strategy? Yeah, you don't, you don't, have, that, you don't have that data. Um, ultimately, it's, it's the, the bigger umbrella of security. Um, that is coming down through every program, whether that's PPC or SEO. It's, it is about user security, and you know it. Uh, it it's going to play into how we make decisions. And the good thing is, it's my competitors and my clients' competitors have the same disadvantage. So it, it's even field uh, in that sense. But you can. And it's going to change how we do marketing. Fun times. Yeah, we'll see. You know. <laughs> um, well, I'd like to um, shift gears a little bit and dig into a couple of, of specific questions uh, that people asked. Uh, hopefully, they're on with us today, and um, and, and we'll be glad to hear their question asked. Um, I try to generalize them. I mean, if they're very specific to that webinar, um, you know, they're a little bit less relevant. But there were a few things that I thought um, um, were you know build off of, uh, of what we've already been talking about. And the first question I want to get into is from a, 
uh, from a small company and they ask, you know, what about a small business site that just needs a web presence and they don't have a blog uh, and probably don't really have time to write a blog, um, so they don't have an easy way to create fresh content and they and they really only update the, their their products intermittently. Um, do you have any advice for, for them in terms of you know creating a program to make sure they try and get at least something new up frequently? Oh yeah, there's quite a bit that they can do, and it's really mostly from a local presence. Um, so establishing a Google Places account and making sure that has that it has a great description, all the data is accurate. You have pictures, um, and then building on that, you want to get your reviews in. So incorporating Yelp, incorporating City Search, uh, insider pages, and making sure your profiles there are relatively strong, and then encouraging your uh, not only your current clients but then also past clients, trying to get them to um, work on the testimonials because I mean that a lot of a lot of these factors are are really what uh, the Google local algorithm is is looking at in terms of uh, ranking. If, if, if it's a plumber, if it's a pizza shop, um, I mean, generally they're going to be focused on specific areas. So you want to make sure that you're, uh, when, when someone is searching for a Boston pizza, that ideally you're within that Google Maps presence and your, and your places account is. Jamaica make a plane, if you're in Alston, you're going to be competing with another 100 to 200 people potentially for the same area. But, yeah. Yeah. I'm hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> but we had, uh, what do we have? Oh, we had Mexican food today. So uh, that's great. Um, one other thought, uh, this comes from a, from a, from a West Coast uh, university. Um, they asked a question and it says, you know, I thought that changing your landing page could put you back at the bottom of search. It takes a while to build up again. Uh, how does this fit with consistently updating your content? Um, so to me, the first one sounds like maybe they're not truly understanding the way the updating process works, so maybe you could address that. Yeah, I would, I would wonder if they're getting uh, paid search mixed up with, with organic search. Mm -hmm. uh, when I hear landing page, I, I automatically go to paid search. And in, in that sense, yes, if they are updating their ad text or things like that, uh, resets quality score and all this good stuff. So there is a, a little bit of a, a hit uh, when you do make those, those changes. But in terms of, of SEO, um, you know, if you're really making those content pages uh, more relevant, um, you know, you're not, you're not, unless you're removing content that you're already ranking on, um, it's not going to be that same sort of, I'm um, on tomorrow, gone tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, this one comes from a, a, an online business, um, maybe getting at the heart of what is Google's strategy, but uh, I'll read the whole question, the, the relevant parts at the end. If Google is constantly changing the SEO rules, yet they know there's a huge industry regarding SEO, such as yourselves, is there a strategy to just ship more people to optimizing investing in pay-per-click where Google makes dollars? Um, but really the question is, you know, why should somebody invest more in search engine optimization versus pay-per-click um, if the SEO, rule, SEO rules are changing all the time? Yeah, I mean, um, certainly I thank Google every day for the, you know, thousand changes they make a year because it, it keeps the industry fresh and uh, no one person knows everything. There's lots of gurus and whatnot, but really no one knows everything in the tomorrow what I know may be, uh, may be non-existent, which is a ask those dollars. So unfortunately with paid search, you know, let's say I have $10,000, the second that we've hit that $10,000 cap, you're gone off of Google. So it's, it's really a solid investment for the long term. Um, you know, for our programs, we, we work with clients for a year, and that's our minimum. It's to say for a year, let's work on building an organic strategy. Paid search, you know, it's tomorrow will be on. Um, so it's really, you know, I, I can't say what the motivations of Google um, may be. Obviously, they're a for-profit company and doing uh, pretty well. So, uh, yeah, they, Matt Cutts, you know, he's the, the spokesperson of Google for SEO. Uh, if people aren't familiar with Matt, go check him out. He's fantastic. Um, there is some support to the SEO world, but they're not here to, to help us game the system. 
Um, and we're not, as Overdrive, not really gaming the system. We're, helping, we're providing relevant content um, based on their recommendations. And yeah, that's the, you know, long-term strategy, SEO is going to work for you. Short-term, PPC is a way to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and I, I don't know if you've met Matt in person, but he's very tall. <laughs> really? <laughs> I wouldn't get that from uh, his videos. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I believe I don't want to. You know, I believe he's about six seven, and uh, I think wow. he played, played basketball at Duke for a little while too. But um, very interesting. So um, next question uh, comes from an online business. If you have a product uh, on your e-commerce site that is a mainstay product, but the specs don't change from season to season, how do you keep the content fresh? Is it just adding relevant copy, rewrite the specs and descriptions? Uh, and then also a second part of that is our, you know, our custom re reviews um, you know, contained within the site, are they uh, also waived uh, for SEO? Uh, if, for the, with regards to the reviews, then, uh, if it's static content on the page, uh, so if you, if you essentially just take a look at the source code and you're able to see the content on the page, then, um, then yeah, that would be incorporated, and that would be that would be probably one one way to uh, to make sure that you're you're continually staying fresh with that that page's content. Mm -hmm. um, and then certainly you, you can you can probably add add your own your own two cents every here and that here and then in terms of what's add your own your own two cents every here and that here and then in terms of what's going on with that product. Um, maybe there's a new feature that they added. There's a new update to it. Um, Possibly incorporating reviews, um, maybe uh, testimonials from other sites that talk about the product, and and quoting those within the uh, within the product content. Um, so so there, there are a few different ways that you, that you can do that, um, and then certainly from a from an external linking, you can you can blog about it and, and reference the content there um, within um, within your your current site content. Yeah. Are are people doing microsites anymore, or did that you get trashed with Panda? You know, around particular products. Uh, we're not really seeing too much in terms of microsites. Uh, generally, from at least from an, uh, from the SEO end of it, I mean, if everything is going to live on your site, you're going to get all the link equity that's stemming from your your master domain, yeah. uh, and then that's going to that's going to be passed down to all your all your deeper pages there. So that's really at this point the the recommendation that we we have it uh, in this stage. Um, unless you're able to, you have a product that's got this ridiculously excellent uh, credibility from mostly from a link perspective, and you're getting all these external links, you could potentially get uh, get some really strong um, strong relevancy uh, from a search engine perspective. But then you you're disassociating yourself with your main brand. In, in that uh, in that regard, so at, in the mo in most situations, we're we're recommending everything stemming off the uh, the main domain and uh, avoiding the microsite. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, great. Um, the um, okay, switching gears uh, to back to Google Plus because it seems like a hot topic of the day. Um, for people getting started with Google Plus um, as it relates to corporate sites and, um, and maximizing, I know you mentioned earlier making it sort of the voice, or, uh, I can't remember the term you used, Michael, but um, uh, giving the brand context. Um, any pointers or thoughts as it relates to the search engine or just you know, getting started in Google Plus? I mean, it's, it's really in terms of get it, you know, getting on, on Google Plus, um, you know, I would say the, the best way is, is to really look at sort of the anatomy of the page, uh, making sure that you're you're thinking of a good display name. Um, the page description and a display name show in the search engine result page. So it's, it's really you know, getting down to that nitty gritty of what keywords do we want to optimize on for the entire site and making sure that they are plus played into to Google+. Um, you know, 
the, the debate between uh, Facebook and Google Plus, you should be beyond both. You should have an editorial calendar, um, you know, for both of these in terms of creating fresh content. In, in a lot of ways, um, I think it's a lot easier for people to get on to Google Plus and to Facebook to create these uh, content versus creating a blog or something like that, just because there is a lot more engagement, and with that engagement comes the opportunity to uh, have people plus one and like, and those will influence uh, whether it's on Google or on Bing's new social, social search, that starts to influence uh, the result page. So it's really an important sort of long-term strategy to, to create that editorial calendar and to think how do you start connecting with users. I mean, it can be, if you go to our page, uh, Google Plus or Facebook page, yes, we have very overdrive marketing heavy, but we also have humorous things on Friday, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag and, and really that's hopefully what people, you know, want to connect with and um, you get some great data out of what people really engage with uh, versus uh, what they don't engage with. So it's, it's really, you know, create that page and think of Bits is doing over there at Google search, I mean, sorry, uh, at Microsoft is, is pretty incredible. Um, and I, you know, I often ask myself, why isn't Bing a higher, higher than 30%? Because some of what they've done uh, for the user is pretty good. I mean, it's, it's really uh, quite accessible. So, um, you know, you got to play in that space. Yeah. I, I want to come back to the Bing thing, and I was sort of saving that for the end. But um, we did have a question, actually, from the, today while we're talking here. Uh, so I thought we'd go ahead and address that in, in the moment because it, uh, it ties off what you were just talking about, Michael. So the question uh, was, if I can paraphrase, is you know, what's a good way for a, for a brand, really, to get started once they're started on Google+, Plus, getting people to, um, you know, to join their page to, you know, to, I guess it's follow is the right term, the page. Um, um, and finding you know, relevant people and building up uh, building up a following. Yeah, I mean it's it's really starting to humanize your brand. Um, Dell has done a really great job uh, at doing this, which is um, similar to Zappos, which is they've put faces to their brand. So just like we have Russ, Steven, yourself, uh, you know, on this this uh, Google Hangout. From this Google Hangout, you could go to our Google Plus page, which is, you know, we're part of Overdrive. Um, but putting a face to the brand, and that is something that Dell did very, very well very early on. Um, it helped really sort of connect everyday users with uh, a face more than just, you know, the Dell logo. Um, and it's then being able to create these sort of individual circles. Um, if you're familiar with Google+, Plus, it, it's all about the circle, right, in terms of privacy and sort of grouping people into to like-minded buckets. Um, so it's really important to, to sort of make sure that we're creating those circles and you can message those individuals differently than other users. You can do the same thing on, on Facebook, but it's, it's a little cleaner on, on Google+, Plus, uh, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really making sure that you have that humanized element uh, within your content. So if you're a small company of, of 10 people, you know, you're as much as some employees may not want to uh, be part of the effort, hopefully you do have a team who wants to be a part of it and jumps into this um, to really help help with the marketing. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the, the, one of the other questions that somebody asked you know, the other week was, you know, I'm a, I'm a social media team, interestingly, but very weak in Google+. And her question was, um, you know, should the focus move away from Twitter and towards Google+, and, you know, I might suggest maybe um, do all of them. <laughs> but interestingly, that is Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. It's like, well, all right, if you're going to do Pinterest, then you probably should be doing Google Plus too. Would you say? Yeah, I would. I would. I mean, you look at the the demographics of all of those sites, and uh, they vary greatly. I mean, Pinterest uh, you know, skews fe female, um, heavy f female usage, and you know maybe that works for for her brand. Google Plus, on the other hand. Not a lot of females on Google Plus, so it all depends on uh, what her what her uh, her initiative is. And I would say, in terms of SEO value and long-term strategy, yeah, she should be there. 
but right now, gosh, everyone just uh, is enamored with Pinterest, uh, particularly if you're a, uh, your target is, is sort of that female demographic. Something I just want to add with that is uh, to take a look at your analytics data and take and see what, what, what's driving traffic at this point. Um, if, if it's coming from Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, and, and see which one, uh, you know, not only, not only with the traffic, but in terms of uh, lead generation, time on site, um, to see which one you're really getting, um, getting more value out of from a uh, site perspective. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for that. So let's, um, we've been talking an awful lot about Google um, and certainly, you know, it's, it's the granddaddy and, 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 and um, you know, this webinar was based on, on, their, on the changes they were making, but a lot is happening with Bing. Um, you know, I, I, I guess they're excited to be a 30% market share, um, you know, it creeps up a little bit, but what, um, you know, you mentioned the Facebook thing, you know, what's the, what should marketers and SEO uh, marketers be thinking about as it relates to, to, to Bing and, and to a lesser extent Yahoo? Um, and it's sort of the the long sort of a long time coming to have this sort of interaction of a, a large social network within search. Um, it comes down to making sure that you are thinking about page rank on your on your Facebook page, which is sort of the SEO value of your Facebook page. Um, you know, looking at those engagement rates. You know, are you getting those likes on your site? Uh, making sure your site does have social enabled checklets. You know, these very basic sort of uh, making sure you have that social enabled on not only just your site, but on the content, individual content of your pages. Um, this, those sort of things really start to help sort of enable on the search engine result page, whether that's, that's Bing or eventually Google. Great. And are we optimizing for Bing or are we still just focused on Google and, uh, you know, whatever you do for Google, you know, Bing rides for free? Oh, that's a trade secret. <laughs> I mean, it, you, look at, you look at the market share, obviously, um, you know, you're looking at 70%. In some countries, it's way more than that. I think other than Russia and China, Google is the dominant source. So uh, I, can't, I can't imagine uh, a good majority of our time matches that market share towards the, to, to the respective engines. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> um, you know, we're coming, uh, we're, we're in about a little over 45 minutes here. We've got just a few minutes left. Um, you know, I really appreciate you guys taking the time. I think this has been, been great. Uh, we appreciate everybody who's been hanging in with us here on both Google and, and also, again, on, uh, on through the YouTube channel. This will be posted later. Um, for those of people who are interested in actually watching the full webinar uh, that we did a couple weeks ago, it's, uh, it's archived on our site, on, on www.percussion.com and under the, under the resources section. Um, maybe you want to just end. Um, look at your pages that are driving you traffic and then look at the pages that aren't driving you traffic uh, and try to figure out ways to, to, I mean, is it buried in the nav? Is it just not gaining traction? Are you using uh, keywords within that content? Are you using metadata? Um, you know, you have to look at sort of what are the, the best practices and we certainly have uh, on our blog a list of best practices uh, to jump off on. Get on to Google Plus if you're not there. Um, there's a lot of hate towards Google+, but in all honesty, um, it's, it's here to stay, and Google's put some serious investment into it, and you need to really start thinking of uh, Google+, as the nucleus of all of the different Google products, whether that's YouTube, um, you know, your AdWords campaigns, Maps, Analytics. Really, you need to start thinking of uh, Google+, as almost the, the hub of that. And I would, I would you know, end with, um, you know, content... Will, will always be king, um, and it's really putting some dedicated resources to creating new content um, and building out uh, 
as much content as you can, whether that is a blog post, whether that's site copy or socially enabled content. Um, you just have to put in the time uh, for that long-term strategy. We can do paid campaigns all day um, and creating those, but unfortunately, um, you know, you, you do have to roll up your sleeves to, to create uh, some real traction to content. Yeah, music to our ears as a content management company. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see that, but I appreciate it. No, I think that you're right. I think um, you know, there's there's so many different factors that uh, you know. At the end of the day, you've got to have good content, and and really, you need more content than you ever needed before. Um, and you've got to be getting it out not only in your own dot com, but you know, as you said, in Google Plus, into Facebook, uh, maybe on Pinterest, or you know. Or whatever comes next. I'm sure there's there's you know, particularly with mobile and that app and those kinds of things are. Like what we're talking about today in terms of that social impact. Yeah, and uh, kind of two things, uh, uh, just two things I'd like to add is um, establish a Webmaster Tools account through Google. Um, that's how Google actually contacted people from uh, following the Penguin update in case they, the sites were, were pulled or penalized. That's, that's their method of, of contacting. And then also there's a great, a great number of tools within the Webmaster Tools interface that uh, Google provides in terms of external links, broken links, uh, malware, uh, impressions that your organic results are getting. Um, that's definitely something to take a look at. And um, second thing, don't buy links. That's the uh, big thing yeah. that Penguin, uh, <laughs> Penguin penalized people. So whenever it, it's going to happen, it's, it's very easy to do, but it's something you want to avoid as much as possible. Uh, get them na as, as naturally as you possibly can. Yeah, that's great advice. It seems easy, you know, just like buying Twitter followers is, you know, was the avant-garde of not so long ago. But um, yeah, that, that's that's great. Uh, that's great advice. I think, you know, one of the changes that uh, I, everybody noticed potentially because of the way Google did it, but um, the downstream impact is still being is yet to be determined is the con consolidation of the Google account, right? So you know, you used to log into Gmail and then you used to log into Google Plus and YouTube right. and your, your Google Analytics account. Now it's one. Um, so you know you could be you could be logged into YouTube, but you're you're still um, uh, because it's all one account now. Your behaviors that you've ascribed to your Google account now are in effect. So if you're hiding your search or you're getting access, yeah. To your and if you're if you're a company, you need to really make sure that you, you have created that one email that goes across all of these different products, and you're not using a hodgepodge because really Google does identify. Uh, based on email, if you looked at, if you've ever tried to connect an AdWords campaign with an analytics campaign, YouTube and all those accounts are you know they're similar but they're enough different that we created a little bit yeah of exactly. Um, well, great. Um, unless there's anything else you guys want to close with, I think um, we can go ahead and wrap this up. I think it was, you know, this was a lot of fun. You know, again, it was we did definitely had you know a number of people joining us, and uh, um, you know, it was great to test out the format. And uh, let's do it again. Yeah, sounds great. It was definitely uh, it was a trip. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> All right, Michael, Russ, Stephen, thanks a bunch, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. All right, thank, thank you, Aaron. Bye bye. Thanks Take for care. joining. Us.